So I've just been listening to a new Terrence McKenna podcast that I've never heard yet, and um, it's brought up a lot of interesting issues that are very relevant to the discussion that the modern mystic and Gary Amendham and I and others have been having about the nature of intelligence and purpose and freedom and free will and and all of these things. And um, the basic idea is, now, now this is all very general, and you know I like to speak and talk and think in generalities because um, it seems to bring the big picture into perspective, whereas the specifics, you, you, you they're important because they provide the concrete details that, that shore up the general theory, but you can get lost in specifics and lose sight of you know, the grand scheme. And I'm talking now about the grand scheme. So in the grand scheme of things, the basic um, framework that the Judeo-Christian Western tradition has been in for most of its history is, is this dichotomy between freedom and law. Um, on the one hand, the universe itself is, has been looked at as a sort of machine that's been created that follows laws forever and it's never going to change those laws. But on the other hand, and, th and this seems like a disconnect from, from the idea of the universe as a law-abiding machine, there is freedom. And this freedom is what where the Judeo-Christian sense of guilt and morality comes from. Because we have the free will to do what we want in a law-abiding universe. So God created the universe. Then he created man, put man in the universe, and said, you're in control now. You have free will. You make choices. And so our whole history has been this struggle to come to terms with these seemingly incongruous notions. That here we are in this mechanical universe without value, without morality, without meaning or purpose, other than the fact that God created it. But now the last 100, 200, 300 years of human um, history, we've sort of done away with the idea of God. God is dead, and, and we've tossed out the creator of the universe. So now it's just us here. And that sort of takes away from our sense of freedom, maybe, even though the the scientific revolution and the Enlightenment and all these things were about giving human beings more freedom, taking it away from this dogmatic um, institution called the church, and, and saying, no, it's the individual that has the freedom. But what that's really led to is this sort of egotistical drive to fulfill my own personal wants and desires, when really my individuality is a product of this cultural communal system or way of looking at life that says you that this that says that I am a free individual. And so in this in that type of a model, the future can't be known. So even though the, the universe is law abiding, we can't predict the future because then all of a sudden there's no freedom left and that drives us crazy. If we're not free, then what what are we doing here? Um and Terence McKenna kind of wanted to move out of that that whole framework, or he's saying that, that the sciences themselves and the human culture is moving out of that framework towards something new, which is a novelty and habit relationship. Instead of freedom law, it's novelty and habit. So no longer are we separate from the world, able to choose and freely act within it and control it, because that's a very alienating feeling because then we're definitely separate from it and we have to always be responsible for everything that we do. The notion of, of novelty, on the other hand, it's 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 Terence said it embeds us in the world and we are nature is this novelty conserving um, process and as it accomplishes something new and creative it builds on the old habits. The old habits don't disappear. And the, they're different than laws because they aren't eternal. They're actually evolving over time, becoming more and more complex. Um, this really surprised me. Terence talked about how the speed of light is not constant. You know, Einstein's equation said, yeah, the speed of light is, is, a, is a constant. And it's not ever going to change. And yet, whenever we measure light throughout the last century, it seems to be increasing over time. The speed is increasing you know, we measured it in 1938, and it was, you know, this speed. And then in 1965, it was a little bit faster. And then, you know, 1995, it's even faster. And so this this is very strange. And, and 
Terence talked about how the uh, the scientific community, instead of dealing with this anomaly and throwing out all of Einstein's work, has said, "Well, no, look, the speed of light is is right here. It's published in this scientific manual, and you know, don't worry about measuring it. That's just you know, the measuring device must be off or something. But no, it's consistently found that the speed of light has been increasing over the past century. Um, similarly, the melting points of various um, elements has been increasing over the past century." This doesn't fit into anything that we know about the universe in the old freedom law paradigm. But in the habit novelty paradigm, it makes perfect sense. The universe is evolving and everything is changing. There are no eternal laws. Everything is a process of becoming. And the universe in this, in this view is more of an organism than a machine. Because whenever we talk about, you know, the modern mystic wants to get rid of the eye in the brain which I'm all for, but that's, I'm, I'm for that in a phenomenological sense of, of my lived experience. There's no I. There's only a we. In the modern mystic, it gets, gets a little uneasy when I start using this word we because it implies some type of sentience, I guess, in here. But that's not what I'm implying. I'm, by saying we, I'm, I'm saying that there is this greater body, this greater organism called the cosmos, the universe, or if you want to look at it on a smaller, more specific scale, the earth, the Gaian ecosystem. It's all connected. It's all one organism, and we exist in relationship with it. There is no I. There is never an I without a community, first of all, without a society. So if we're going to use this word I, we only mean it in relation to the term community. So it's myself in relation to everybody else. There is no me alone. So we can use the words in this new way that we know that they're just in relationship to the opposite. Um, but when we start talking about we, we're talking about a relationship between the various organs in an organism or the various neurons in a larger global mind. And the reason I think we are moving in that direction is, is just the natural evolutionary outcome of, of this hab habit novelty process. Um, we can't assume that natural selection and survival of the fittest are eternal laws of nature because nature is always changing. They might have been habits of nature, you know, back before um, organisms developed this higher mental capacity, before mammals and, and humans and higher primates developed this mental capacity to really um, allow culture and nurture to play such a large role in comparison to nature so that the, the habits of, of the genes which are very entrenched become more fluid and dynamic and novel as soon as we develop a brain on, and a nervous system capable of sustaining this higher level of evolution called culture called mind language whatever you want to call it all of a sudden habits become a lot less stable and, and memes as opposed to genes, memes are a lot more fluid and they're, they're easy to change and manipulate and design and, and what's after that, you know? So we can't assume that, that there are any laws anywhere and the law-freedom dichotomy now, we, we have to move past that because obviously we're starting to realize we're not free and the alternative seems to be, well, everything is determined. But no, we're moving out of that whole framework of law versus freedom into this habit novelty framework where when something new happens it's not that we created it out of our own free, free will or something it's that nature is inherently creative and when something new happens it builds on old habits and we're not responsible for the newness we just sort of participate in it and it just it's bestowed upon us and we're not the ones responsible we're just a part of this process that's perfectly natural that's always been going on um, so yeah, the key really is just, we're not a, we're, this isn't a machine. The body, the brain, it's not a machine, it's not a piece of hardware that has programming. I mean, that's a fine metaphor if, if the goal is just to convince people of this new way of feeling themselves, but we run into problems with that metaphor because this universe is, is an organism. It's alive and it has feelings and intentions and an intelligence in, in the sense that it, it has a memory and it can build new novel relationships with itself based on that memory. 
So we're an organism. The universe is an organism, not a machine.